when I look at my career and my experiences, we were over conditioned. I don't know if over conditions a, a, a bad thing, but we we actually were complacent mm. in a lot of ways because we got away with a lot, but also because we were so conditioned for it. The protocols that we teach is number one, breathe, and it sounds. I mean, I've heard guys on your podcast. I pay attention to guys like Huberman, who put this stuff out. Breathing not only off gases CO two, it also brings you back to your to your body. It gets you out of your head and brings back awareness in your body. If me and you are free falling, have you ever free fall? No, dude, you got to do that shit. No, I don't. I know Andy Stump is going to. He wants to tether can, you Andy to his body. Shit. <laughs> For fuck, charity. Fuck off, Andy. For charity. Yeah, I'll, do I'd for rather charity. donate money. I'll cut you a check. <laughs> fuck off, Andy. Oh, man. Um, <laughs> if me and you were falling, and this is an example of something we, we did, but we didn't realize what we were doing. If me and you were falling in free fall, and I was the new guy, and you were the senior guy, you would be flying around me like a fucking hummingbird, like zipping around me effortlessly. I would be overwhelmed by stress, freaking the fuck out in my head. I would be very narrow in my focus, st- not seeing my altimeter, seeing the earth coming closer to me, and scared shitless. If I did look at my altimeter, I would glance at it, and it would be hyper-focused. And then you would look at me, and to calm me down, you would do this, right? That's the hand and arm signal to arch. So I would do this. So what are you doing if you're just listening? You're just shaking your hand. Shaking your hand, right? Like it's wet. It's wet. So this is the hand and arm signal for arch. This is the hand and arm signal to relax. So if you said this, like this, when I did this, I'm literally moving my hands, which is bringing awareness back into my body because I'm not thinking about impending doom in my head. And all of a sudden, my body relaxes. And I'm like, oh, fuck. And I'm like, oh, I could see my altimeter. Oh, things aren't so bad. Mm. We get in our heads a lot, and breathing not only helps optimize oxygen in our body under stress, but it also is the awareness that if I'm breathing, I'm also thinking about breathing, which means I'm not thinking about impending doom, I'm, mm. that I'm going to fucking die. Um, the second thing, um, we, we could wrap that part up with just affirmation. Most people, we're our own worst enemies, right? We, we beat ourselves up routinely. Uh, I heard you say you don't have to crit- nobody needs to criticize you because you do it fuck enough to yourself. I'm the same way. I don't need critics because I'm my own worst critic. Um, that could be a detriment. But also, if you look at confirmation bias, uh, the unique thing about confirmation bias is it, it's like this cell phone. If I pick up this cell phone and I could record in 4K, which is typical of most phones, that's kind of how our brain and our, our senses work. If I pick this phone up and I push record and record it in 4K, it would stop recording when I've met all the bandwidth. I filled up the memory and it, it would crash. And then I would have to partition it, I'd have to shut it down and it's fucking reset. So if we are thinking about that in psych- psychological terms, in confirmation bias, we create the narrative. Then I go out into the world focused. I can't keep it running in 4K so I can only partition my focus. I'm looking at you, you're looking at me, we're focused, and then we shut it down. We watch YouTube and stare into oblivion for fucking an hour, we get back to whatever and we're focused. You could only partition your focus. The problem with us is if we are looking for confirmation of the narrative in our heads, we'll go out into the world and we will look for evidence that we are who we say we are. So if you wake up and you're like, I'm a fat piece of shit, then you'll walk, walk into the world looking for evidence of that and go, that dude looked at my stomach. I fucking knew it. He looked in disgust. I'm a fat piece of shit. Because that's how we collect the evidence. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, what, it's, how, it's how faith is based. Because that becomes our faith and our new belief. If somebody who's religious doesn't look at an accident. Hey, six kids died in a van rollover. That's tragic. That's, that, I question my belief in God now because God would never do that. They do the opposite. They go, you know what? Was there another vehicle that bypassed through there? Yeah, that could have been T-Bone. That had two people's lives in it. They have a family. That's a miracle of God. And that reaffirms my faith and my belief. We do the same thing every day. So if you want to become more resilient and more, and more focused as a person, you need to wake up and say, I'm the fucking best. I mean, I know Andy Stumps, Jack Carr, and all the Navy SEALs that I know, they live this because they, they think they're the best. Navy SEALs think they're the fucking best. Um, that's how you become more resilient because if you affirm every day, even if you're not, and you say you're good enough or you're the best, 
you're going to do well. It's like the Jocko shit. It's uh, Goggin shit. It's that easy. You just say, I'm the fucking best. I'm a badass. I'm going to do it. And if you go out in the world looking for that belief, you'll find it and you'll get better. So you think there's a negative aspect to being too self-critical because you can sort of program yourself that you are a piece of shit. 100%. Yeah. I mean, it, here's what's But there's also, you could bullshit yourself to think you're the best when you really suck. A lot of people are like that. Yeah. So what's the balance? So um, let me give an example. Like if a guy works out with me, um, I, I did a, uh, on my YouTube channel, Mike Glover Actual, I did a, uh, a mental health video. And my mental health video was simple. I said, don't be fucking lazy. And a lot of people were like, well, what do you mean don't be lazy? I'm like, exactly that. Don't be fucking lazy. Because if you want to do something in your life that requires improvement, it likely correlates to action. And that typically correlates to physical fucking movement. So you want to be a better fighter. You physically got to remove your ass from the couch, flick the Doritos out of your belly button and get into the fucking dojo, right? So it's a plan of action, not just a plan, period. A lot of people who come to my training, they do five minutes of calisthenics. I had a guy, I won't mention his name, um, I don't even fucking remember his name, but I don't mention this, uh, this, this situation exactly. But we're doing five minutes of calisthenics and his world is falling apart. He probably shows up with an idea who he thinks he is inside of his head. He does the thing and realizes, holy fuck, five minutes of calisthenics just whip my ass. Maybe I need to reprioritize my hierarchy of needs and skills. So I see a lot of guys on social media talking about how they're the best shooters on the planet and they're fucking fat. So if you think being better prepared is, is focused on being fat and shooting cool, you're not going to survive. You're going to be the first to fucking go, right? So we need to strike the balance. Most people, unless they have the awareness because they're exposed to the weakness, won't do it. And that's why I encourage people, go to your local dojo, um, get pummeled by, I'm 240 pounds. I, I have 160 pound kids. Chad Robichaud's son fucking pretzel rolled me a couple years ago, it folded my neck, actually put me in a hurt locker folded me in half and I'm like I need to go on a sabbatical and become better because when I come back and fight him again I'm gonna pummel this kid to death we need that kind of exposure in our life you definitely need something that gives you a reality check because there's a lot of delusional people